Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been some important developments recently in the sphere of radio astronomy connected with South Africa. They involved a CAT-7 radio telescope in the Karoo and the International Square Kilometre Array, or SKA, program. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss these developments. Hi, Keith. What is the latest news concerning CAT-7? Well, it's very good news. CAT-7 was originally designed mainly as an engineering prototype to test uh, new systems and new technologies for the planned Meerkat Array telescope which will be built in the Karoo and will have 64 dishes. Now CAT-7 got its name from Karoo Array Telescope 7 dishes. And what has happened is it's begun to do uh, high quality scientific research. And the news is that on May the 16th, the first scientific paper based on observations uh, taken using CAT-7 was published in the monthly notes of the Royal Astronomical Society in the UK. Now the monthly notes are incredibly prestigious and have been in constant publication for something like 186 years. So this is a high profile uh, publication event and it's a really great uh, endorsement that CAT-7 is now functioning as a scientific instrument as a proper telescope and not just as a test bed for the engineers. What are they studying with the local telescopes? Right, well what CAT7 was doing and it was doing it in conjunction with the 26 meter diameter dish at the Hart Beersuk Radio Astronomy Observatory uh, known as Hart Rao for short was to look at what's called an X-ray binary star system and named Circinus X1. Now this is composed of a neutron star. A neutron star is a tiny but incredibly dense supermassive remnant of a giant star that exploded in a supernova. A neutron star is about 20 kilometers in diameter but has huge gravitational uh, pull. And it is orbiting a normal star somewhat like our own sun. Uh, they have an elliptical orbit around each other which lasts every 16 and a half days. Now when they're closest together the neutron star pulls material off the other star. This material forms what's called an accretion disk around the neutron star. Now two things happen to the material in that accretion disk. Some of it hits the surface of the neutron star and when it does that it triggers intense bursts of X-ray radiation. Um, in fact, uh, Sosinus X1 is one of the most luminous X-ray sources in the galaxy, and that's why it's called an X-ray binary. But other of the material gets accelerated away from the neutron star in two incredibly powerful jets of material, which proceed from the two poles, from the North Pole up and the South Pole down. Um, and this material is accelerated to nearly the speed of light. And when this hits surrounding gas clouds, it generates uh, intense flash, flashes of radio wave energy. And it was that that the CAT-7 and Hartrow 26 meter dishes were observing at the same time, but at different frequencies. The International SKA organization also has a new home. Can you tell us about that? Well, this is also uh, good news, the progress being made on the program. The new head office was officially opened in England at the, at the beginning of the month. Um, it was quite a high profile opening. They had the British Minister of Universities and Science. Uh, the, the British designation system is different from the South African. Uh, the British equivalent of a minister is a Secretary of State. Uh, a British minister is kind of junior to a Secretary of State, but in this case, uh, the guy's name is David Willits, senior to a South African Deputy Minister in that, though he's not a Secretary of State, he actually attends cabinet meetings. So it was a high profile opening. The new building uh, will house uh, up to 60 people, including visiting scientists and engineers. It now gives a permanent home 
for the direction of the global program. Uh, it's located at a place uh, very famous in radio astronomy called Jodrell Bank in rural Cheshire in, in northwest England. That's home to one of the most famous radio telescopes in the world, the 76 meter Lovell dish, uh, which is for decades was the biggest fully movable radio telescope dish in the world and is still the third biggest. Uh, the, the, the new headquarters cost uh, about three 0.34 million pounds and was funded by the University of Manchester, which is responsible for Georgia Bank. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.